guys, welcome back. It's your girl Toya T, and this is the wind down of HBO's Insecure. This week we're doing season four, episode eight, Low Key Happy. Now, before we start, we have to take a sip. All right now, I have a Soro with uh, Havana Club aged rum some Caribbean vibes for you because this is a real cool vibe of an episode. I'm happy it happened when it happened. It definitely was very timely in terms of what's going on in the world. It's just a nice, happy, just feel good episode. So I'm going to take a sip. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. That's homemade sorrow. And let's begin. So it starts off pretty much where the last episode ends. We see Lawrence at the bar. We find out exactly who he was calling to meet up. And it was Issa. We all knew that, especially from the previews. And he seems kind of nervous. He's checking his breath. He popped in a Tic Tac, almost choked, which was funny because it shows how awkward he is. And then we see Issa come in and, you know, she's waving at him. And all of a sudden she busts her ass, which, again... She looked great. And then she went and was went full Issa and just face planted. She was on the ground. Everybody saw it. People try to help her up. Lauren try to help her up. And she's like, I need a minute. And she got herself up. They end up sitting at the bar. And it's real cute. They're flirting. And Issa, of course, asked him what is it exactly that he wanted to talk to her about. But before they even get a chance to even do that, uh, a lot of stuff is happening at the bar. The bartender is coming in and asking him for drinks. Lawrence is about to ask for Issa's regular drink, which is Prosecco and something else. I forgot what it is. But she told him that she is elevated to Prosecco and vodka. That's her new grown drink. So the whole theme of the episode was them getting to know each other anew because there's new developments from both of them since they've broken up. It's real cute. He mentions to Issa that he ran into Molly at the airport and Issa is not enthused and he's like, what? And she's like, I don't talk to her anymore. And Lawrence thinks that she's joking and she's like, nah, for real, we don't talk no more, like at all. And Lawrence tried to ask her what was going on with that, but then the bar starts getting very loud and very crunk, <laughs> very quickly all of a sudden there's a bunch of people coming in someone hits into Issa some people are trying to get to the bar they're going in between them completely disrespecting the whole like two people are sitting with each other and talking and you're splitting right between them to try to get to the bartender and so they end up leaving that bar because they can't talk they can't hear each other and before they leave the bar all their flirting and banter is just so cute and the first thing that I thought like first few minutes in of them sitting together was, are they going to have sex at the end of this, <laughs> this episode? Because the chemistry is super explosive. Like you can see why they did it in the first place. And now that they're both in new spaces in their lives, they still have that spark, which is great uh, to see. But it was, it was like the love spark and the sexual chemistry and tension all in there so but we'll get to that when we get to it so they go uh to a mexican restaurant that lawrence mentions and when him and Issa were dating that Issa always wanted to go visit this restaurant and so they take a lift over there what is it a, a lift lux lux black and Issa is impressed remember again when she was dating lawrence he ain't had no job and he was broke and depressed. So, but Issa, this is a whole new Lawrence. She's on a date with new Lawrence. She's on a pre-date. That's what we do now in this era of dating. We have pre-dates before we have real dates. So she on a pre-date. <laughs> she was on a pre-date with Lawrence at the bar. And now she's about to be on a date date with him when they go to the Mexican restaurant. But on the way to the restaurant, they're in this Lift Lux Black and the driver is this very talkative black woman, which is funny because 
Issa was talking about when she drove for Lev, she always asked people when they got in, do you want to have a talkative ride or a quiet ride? And she said, I always got mad when they want to talk, like what the hell you want to talk about? Which I felt the same because when I drove for Lyft, I also, I didn't ask people if they wanted to talk. I just let them, I say hello and they say hello back. And then if they start commenting and talking, I'll talk with them. If not, quiet. I prefer not to talk to strangers. I'm just still, it's still there from first grade. Stranger danger. Like, I don't need to talk to you. <laughs> so, I don't need to talk to you unless I need to talk to you. But, um, so the lady's asking a bunch of questions. She's asking if they're on their first date and Issa is just playing this lady does. She's so annoyed. And Lawrence is playing around with the woman and then he tells him like, no, we're not on a first date. We're actually, we actually know each other. And so the woman's like, oh, are you married? And he said, no, but you know, I actually bought this one a ring, but she messed it up. And Issa looks at him like, what? <laughs> but, you know, it, it seems like Lawrence is joking, but because he's going back and forth with the driver, which I did peep, was wearing a chauffeur's outfit. So I was like, damn, I don't, I don't think I've ever been in a, in a lift a Lyft Lux black or a Lyft Lux like this luxury ride with chauffeur and hat and, and suit. I was like, okay, all you needed was a partition, please. That's what I would need, a partition, please, so you don't talk to me. Partition, please. <laughs> So they get to the restaurant and Issa admits that she has been to the restaurant before and Lawrence kind of gets that she's been there on a date, <clears throat> on some dates. So she admits it. And it's awkward at first, but Lawrence tells her like, let's not do this. Like we know each other. Let's just, no eggshells tonight. Let's just be honest. Let's just say what we want to say without worrying about hurting the other person's feelings, which psh, baby that was the kind of conversations that I like I kind of approach most people in that way if I know them and especially when I'm on dates I will just say whatever it's like yes I want to impress you like I'll get all dolled up like I got dolled up for y'all you know wear my it's a good time to be black and sexy shirt I want some nice a nice skirt some heels some jeans you know smell real good got that that Terry Mugla coming at you some angel some Coco Chanel Mademoiselle you know just you know, just giving you all that zhuzh and that, ooh, sex appeal. But I will tell you straight. I will, I will talk to you straight. And I love that that's what they ended up doing was like, no eggshells, just like put it on the table so that we get exactly to what we want to get to without having to tiptoe around each other. So I like that. They sit down, they order food. Like Issa is like trying to get to it. She's just brutal. She's already been there. She knows Lawrence. Lawrence hasn't changed much in his tastes. So the waitress comes before he can even look over the menu too long. She's like, mm -mm, I'm hungry. So she orders everything for them. It's a bunch of food and his drink and her drink. And so when the waitress leaves, she's like, yo, so what did you have to talk to me about? And Lawrence ends up asking her what would have happened if they had stayed together blew my mind blew my mind and I've actually had these kind of conversations with not all my exes but at least one maybe two it's an interesting conversation and the question in itself really reminded me of if you've seen that show uh, it's on social media, I think. It's from Glamour. It's called The And. And it's usually conversations between two people in a relationship or who used to be in a relationship. And they sit face to face and they ask each other the tough questions. Like, why did you cheat on me? And that's exactly what happens. So he opens up and says that he thinks that he gives up on things too soon. And that includes their relationship. And I was like, oh, has Lawrence been going to therapy? Damn. Oh, he, he really digging. It's either that or Lawrence is in his grown man, I'm ready to settle phase. And I think I said that before the episode when he broke up with, with Condola, that the main reason he had an issue with their relationship is that he felt it wasn't going anywhere because she was talking about she didn't want to get married again after her divorce. And he took it as like she didn't want to have family. And so I think he's in that mode and thinking about like, I want to settle. I want to settle with somebody that makes me happy. And Issa responds to it by saying that she wishes that he didn't give up on the relationship because we all know that she was devastated. That first season after he found out that she, that she had cheated on him with Daniel and he left, Issa was in tears. And then when she had to move out of the apartment 
and she had that whole daydream about him coming back and them staying together and living in the apartment and getting married and having a baby like we all know that Issa was still very much in love with Lawrence and very much still invested in their relationship so this conversation was exactly what I wanted to hear I was like damn I felt like I was there with them <laughs> so just like that show the end he asked specifically why she cheated on him and particularly if it was something to do with Daniel or what would it have been anybody and she just mentioned to him that it wasn't like that it wasn't just any old person it was the fact that he was just at the right place at the right time and he was giving her attention when Lawrence was not like she felt like during that time Lawrence was very distant and we all know that he was very much depressed he was like you didn't want to do nothing you didn't want to go out on dates you didn't want to go out you didn't want to have sex with me and he gave me that attention and then when it happened it was a slip up and I felt really bad about it and Lawrence I think was starting to kind of understand that because he mentions it was really hard for him during that time because he'd have to watch her go to work every day and he didn't have anywhere to go because he was unemployed and he felt like a failure and he said he actually thought about moving back home to Virginia and live with his parents but he felt that it would have been worse because he would have felt like a like a double failure having to move back home so that's what he was going through and that's why he was in that deep depression and kind of pulled away from her and she was like, why didn't you tell me? He was like, I just couldn't. And again, this is why I like this honest conversation because if they've had this honest conversation and wasn't worried about, oh, I don't want to upset him or I don't want to upset her, they they could have dealt with that issue, but they didn't. And so now that they're having this conversation, it's like, oh, thank God, yes, answer the questions, answer the questions. But after that, Issa asked him a question and she says, was it true that you bought a ring? And he said, what do you think? And Issa's face is like, oh my gosh. And he's like, what? What did you expect? Like, we were looking at rings. We were together. They were together for five years. They did talk about marriage. And so he said, yeah, it made sense. Like, I bought one. And, you know, and then stuff happened. And he jokes like, oh, so you see that you ain't shit, right? And, and Issa was like, yeah, you're right. I wasn't shit. And remember back then, even though um, Lawrence was, like, depressed, she also was very much disengaged from the relationship and as Molly pointed out in that first season or the second season like she didn't really appreciate what she had with Lawrence even though they were going through that rough patch she was staying in the relationship but really not trying to work on it and it was interesting to have them see that because then she saw her fall also in the demise of their relationship and I was happy to see that and he made that joke about her like and she was like you now you see that you ain't shit and she's like yeah I wasn't and uh you know now it's different because I'm the shit now I was like yes confident Issa yes so Issa goes to the bathroom and we stay at the table with Lawrence and we see that he gets a text message from Condola I couldn't really read it I didn't want to get too close to my tv to see what it said but pretty much I think she was saying like hey can we talk can you come by later and, and, and we can talk about stuff and uh, it's pretty much says like you know I'm, I'm actually doing something right now but I'll hit you up later and the first thing I thought was like is this shit pregnant <laughs> I hope this is not a game situation with Darwin and Melanie and what was her name what was his big mama's name Tasha no I can't remember but you remember the, the Derwin's girlfriend and then he broke up with her and went back to Melanie and then when they were like finally getting back together Janae that was her name she was calling him all day to tell him that she was pregnant that's what I thought was going on and I was like oh girl come on please please don't don't throw a wrench in this I was like okay Gondola don't fuck this up <laughs> So they leave the restaurant and as they were just talking outside, all of a sudden we hear a brah, 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 brah. And who is it? It's TSA Bay, AKA Calvin. I told you I didn't know that man name. He's still going to just be TSA Bay. So it is very awkward. Issa is not happy to see him. He tried to give her a hug. She's like, uh-uh, let me give some dap. He's like, no, I know you too well. Come here, girl. So he pulls her in. He pulls Lawrence in for a man hug. He's there with a date. His date's name is Mazda. It's like, well, at least your parents were realistic in their goals. 
<laughs> instead of naming her Mercedes or Porsche, they named her Mazda. Love it. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> so they're talking and Lawrence just trying to rivet Issa was like, so how y'all know each other? And TSA Bay was like, oh yeah, we used to get it in. <laughs> Elbra has no filter. And his girl was just like on her phone, like, uh, 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 uh. Um, and it was just so funny. They ended up walking off because Mazda mentions that they needed to hurry up and have dinner because her friend is having a show on the art walk, which is close by to the restaurant. So uh, they leave and Issa and Lawrence were standing there and he was just like, that was so perfect. Like, this is perfect that we talked about your dating life and then I meet one of these dudes. I can see what you saw in him. It's real cute. Again, cute banter, cute flirting. And then Issa hints that she wants to go to Art Walk with him. And then Lawrence, I love that he did this. He he played her. He walked off. He's like, okay, so it's nice seeing you. He's like, you know, I'll talk to you later. I gotta go. And he walks off and Issa's just like, what? And then he comes back. He's like, I'm joking. Let's go. <laughs> love it. So they head over to the Art Walk. And again, cute banter. I mean, I'm sitting here like, yo, I want to date Issa. Issa was giving me the good vibes, <laughs> yo. <laughs> this is a great date. You're giving off all the good positive My dream date. Start off at the bar, go to a restaurant, eat, talk, like in a nice space where you can hear each other, good food, more drinks, then take a long walk somewhere and talk some more. And then the yeah, after, but we haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> <laughs> but it's great and they start talking about happiness and Issa starts talking about how she feels like she's creating her happiness with this block party and what she's trying to do after like put together smaller black events for different brands different companies and Lawrence is like yes I like this he's like I like this this you this new confident happy Issa, self-assured Issa, not the one that he was dating before that was, you know, very awkward, very insecure, and also hated her job, which kind of just poured out of her. It was just like seeping through her pores, which I can understand. I was in that position. <laughs> I was in that position last year when I was like, I hate my job. And every single conversation I had with any of my friends was like, I hate my job. I want to leave. I hate it. Fuck them, fuck this, <laughs> fuck these kids. <laughs> but he said he really liked it and she asked him if he's happy and he said, yeah, I think I'm, I'm happy, I'm getting there. He mentioned that he loves what he does and he realized that he likes working on teams and not necessarily being the leader of a project, but like helping to put together a project with other people, which... Issa points out, like, you were always working on creating something yourself and having people work under you. And he's like, that's what I always thought that I was, I was supposed to do. But I found what actually makes me happy, which, love it. Love it. Love it. That's why it's working out right now. He's happy. She's in a happy space. They have great chemistry. They get along. They have a lot in common. I mean... It makes only sense that they would get back to this. I mean, they just needed the space, the, the break. I think if they get back together, that this is a good space for them, that this is a good foundation for them to start off a new relationship, just like leave the other stuff that happened in the past behind them and start fresh, fresh new place, fresh new relationship, maybe in a fresh new city. <laughs> Again, if he moves to San Francisco, Issa girl, you ain't got nothing keeping you to LA. <laughs> leave with him. Leave, girl. Or at least do the long distance and then leave. Because it's not that far. San Francisco to LA is like a one hour flight less than. And if you drive it, it's about six hours. Doable. Trust me. Doable. <laughs> So they're walking around, they're talking, and my favorite scene is them in front of these lights, these like horizontal lights, 
and it's like blue and red and they're each in each block and I just love that scene. I love it. I love it. I love it. It just gave me like romantic movie vibes. This is this is the black love movie that I want to see. This is the this is it right there. That that is the scene. If I had to give you an example of what I what I think of when I'm thinking of black love, young black love, dating. That's it, right there. Not all up on each other, not like the fake, you know, choreographed laughing and talking and holding hands through the park. Not that, just the scene of them looking at each other and the colors contrasting, but going together and them each in their own space, but then like, it works. It just works for me. So during this part, Condola calls again. And um, Issa sees it this time and she's like, oh, is that Condola? He's like, yeah. He said, you know, I don't know what's gonna go on with us. Like we've been talking a bit because Issa admit admitted to him earlier that she knew that they broke up. They leave it there again. I'm like, girl, you called a second time. Are you pregnant? Please don't be pregnant. Don't mess up this. Don't mess it up. Gosh. So they keep walking and they're looking at art and they're each giving their interpretation of stuff. And then they both look at this one painting, this one piece of art that, that Lawrence notices that he ends up buying. We never get to see it. All I was thinking is, what is it that he bought? What did Lawrence buy? Can we see what Lawrence bought from this art walk? I just want to see it. I want to see what it is. Why did you focus on it and show us their faces and then cut to the next scene? <laughs> show me what he bought. What do you think that he bought? What, do you think it's some kind of like love pictures, some black man holding a black child or two black people together in a, in a couple? Like, <laughs> I don't know what it is. I don't know. Is it, is it this? Does it look like this? <laughs> What does it, it look like that? Like, does it look like that? Like, what does it look like? So we get to the end and they're about to go home and Iso asks him where he lives and she finds out that he doesn't live that far from her. She's like, we neighbors now, which is funny. And so she offers to pay for the lift since he paid for the last one, but of course it's not a lift, Lux Black. Okay, it's a regular lift. And it's his apartment first. And Issa's like, oh, wow, you look like you have like a real grown man apartment over here. And she's kind of giving a hint that she'd like to see this apartment one day. And he tells the driver, can you give her five minutes? And she's like, what? He's like, yeah, she needs to come in and see my place. So she goes in with him and checks out his place. She sees the couch, the, the couch that they had bought together. Remember when they had renewed their relationship the first season before he found out that she cheated on him with, with Daniel? He has the couch and she's like, oh, you found a good place for it. And he's like, yeah. So I was like, yes, keep bringing back the, 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 the details from season one. That's, that's for the, the real long time fans like me who've been watching since episode one, season one, who was excited, who was taping it from the first episode and reviewing it from the first episode. <laughs> so she's looking around and she has to go to the bathroom and Lawrence takes the time to call Condola. He goes outside, so at least he's respectful about it so she wouldn't be able to hear. Calls her. He tells her, like, you know, pretty much, like, I can come by maybe later. I'll let you know once I finish up with what I'm doing. And then he goes back inside, and Issa is there. She's like, were you talking to Condola? He said, yeah. And so she kind of looks defeated. But then she starts working towards the door, and this is where the no eggshells, no chaser, just say what you want, say what you need. And she says... What if I wanted to stay? It's like, yes, Isa. What if I wanted to stay? And he said, I don't know. Should we? And she said, I had a good time. You make me happy. And he said he had a good time. And she also makes him happy. And then she moves in for the kiss. And Isa, Isa got her man. Okay, she went. She took control. And then they went and made sweet love together. Sweet love. Not that awkward sex that she was having with TSA Bay on the first episode of the season. She was making sweet love to him. Sweet love, sweet love. Mm. Mm. Thinking about you need a baker. I'm in love, sweet love. <laughs> I'm going to take a drink to that. Next morning they wake up. It's not awkward. It's not awkward at all. They wake up. Issa looks over at Lawrence. Lawrence rolls over. He's smiling at her. 
they were like, it was a good night. And Issa gets up, start getting dressed to leave. And he's like, oh, you want me to call your car? She's like, no, I'll just walk. Because again, they live really close to each other. She leaves. She does her little walk of shame. But she's blissful. She's, she's not, she's not upset. It was a good encounter between the two of them. I would love to see what happens next. There was no pretense. There was no like, okay, so what are we now kind of conversation. It was just like, this was good. I'm happy that we had a good time yesterday. We're in a good space. This happened. And I'll talk to you later and we'll, you know, just see where things go. So that's how it ended as Issa's walking home and we see her walking through Englewood and walking past the different uh, stores and the different spaces and it just ends with an LA view and I love it. I love it. I love this episode way better than I like the episode that was Molly sent. What do you think is going to happen? We have two episodes left. I don't know. Seems like the penultimate episode. Molly and Issa seeming to reconcile then it's the last episode and I don't know what's gonna happen. Do you guys know what's gonna happen? If you do, let me know. Let's talk about it. I hope you guys weren't distracted by my wonky eyelash, which I only realized after I had to change my battery pack and my memory card 15 times. But either way, still had a good time, still had a good drink. Let's end it off with a sip. Mmm, tastes so good. And I will see you guys next week for episode nine. All right. Bye-bye. Mm. Cheers to Issa and Lawrence making sweet, sweet love. Sweet, sweet love.